Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing um, several problems from quantum mechanics and this is because well on the last video one person said that they would like more quantum mechanics problems so that's why I'm doing this and yeah we're going to be doing the first four problems um, which are from a section called statics and I think I'm going to continue this doing like three to four problems a week and Maybe for like the other one or two videos that I do in the week, I just have a different video that's not called mechanics, probably something that's ENM or, some, or thermodynamics or relativity, things like that. Okay, so let's start off with number one. Let's get right into it. Number one, an end of a light, light wire rod is bent into a hoop of radius R. The straight part of the rod has length L, a, mass, a ball of mass M is attached to the other end of the rod. The pendulum thus formed is hung the swarms is hung by the hoop onto a revolving shaft. The coefficient of friction between the shaft and hoop is mu. Find the equilibrium angle between the rod and the vertical. Okay, so I think the hardest part ab about this problem is first trying to visualize what's actually going on. And before I explain it, um, maybe try to pause the video and try to figure out what's going to actually happen once it starts rotating and what kind of um, Ang like what what this um, pendulum will look like, what orientation it will be in. So I'll explain it now, and it's actually not that difficult to see. You'll kind of after a little bit of thinking figure it out. So first, you're not you're gonna realize that it's not just gonna stay vertical like this, obviously because it wants to find the equilibrium angle, but because there's a force of friction pointing it pointing this way. The, um, pointing this way, which is kind of obvious since it's spinning in this direction. And so the force of friction is going to make it start to tilt, right? And so well, let's say it um, makes it tilt this way. Then, then if it tilts that way, it's not going to make sense because the mass is just going to bring it back and the forces won't be balanced. But it's actually going to tilt this way and the mass is going to go this way. But sure, I'll show you what I mean. I'll draw it relatively large so that it's pretty viewable. And this is going to be the the end stick and the rotating part is going to be like this. And you can kind of see how this is working, right? Um basically as this tries to pull over, this tries this balances it back and that's why it that's why it's able to stay in equilibrium in this way. If it's on the other side, or well, um both this this one is pulling this way and well the forces are not going to balance. So from here we have to find the equilibrium equilibrium angle between this and the vertical. And and the first thing we can realize is but the vertical is actually pretty nice in this problem. So if you now let's let's balance torques to see this. So the forces on this ring are going to be the normal force. Oops, in the back are going to be the normal force here, and there's also going to be a friction force, which is going to be pulling it this way. I'm just going to draw it like this for simplicity, and let's balance torques about the point here, right here. And if we balance torques about there, these two provide zero torque. So this has to provide zero torque as well. And oh yeah, that's also one way you can see why the other um, direction doesn't work. And forces also don't balance. But So then this line right here has to be parallel. Um, or actually it has to be, it has to contain this um, vertical mg force, this gravitational force. So that means this line is just the vertical here. And the problem is reduced to finding the vertical, um, finding the angle between this and this. And we're going to do that by first finding the center here. And from here, um, it's going to be kind of a, geoma a geometry problem. But there's one more thing we need to use. So if, if we let this be n, the normal force be n, and the coefficient of friction between the shaft and the hoop is mu. So, and since this is connect, this is automatically mu n. So from here, we can find this angle right here, right? Just by vertical angles, this is 
ArcTMU. That's ArcTMU. And from there, we just need to find this angle, but it's really hard to see. This is not any better, but we need to find this angle. And we do know this is R, and we also know this is L plus R. So we can just employ law of sines, right? And we have from law of sines, sine of arctamu, sine of arctamu over um, L plus R is equal to sine of, let's call this theta, sine of theta over R. And sine of arctamu, if you imagine the triangle created by so this triangle is going to have, this angle will be arc to mu, if it's mu to 1. So, and this is by Pythagorean theorem, mu squared plus 1. So sine of arc to mu is mu over mu squared plus 1. It is equal to 1 over L plus R times mu over mu squared, square root mu squared plus 1. And this implies that theta is equal to arc sine of r over l plus r times mu over root mu squared plus 1. Well, this might not look that nice, but it's the calculations are not that bad, so you'll probably be inclined to believe that this is the correct answer. And yeah, so Sometimes problems in Olympia physics or just physics in general are not going to have that nice of answers, but I guess you just have to live with that. All right, so let's move on to the next problem. Problem number two. Of course, it's again statics. As I mentioned earlier, this section is all about statics. Okay, problem number two. On an incline with slope angle alpha, there lies a cylinder with mass m, its axis being horizontal. A small block with mass m is placed inside it. The coefficient of friction between the block and the cylinder is mu. The incline is non-slippery. What is the slope angle alpha for the cylinder to stay at rest? The block is much smaller than the radius of the cylinder. So, so um, this might be um, uh, this situation might be a little bit complicated. So let's just talk about why it's static first. This um, hoop is going to want to roll down, and this block essentially bounces out by pushing down and also with friction but okay so now that we've got that out of the way let's let's try to let's try to look at this block because everything is like the everything else here this um surface surface here is has essentially infinite um coefficient of, fr coefficient of friction it can be as large as needed and And so that's why we're going to work with this block first. So let's focus on this little incline right here. And if the block is here, and this incline is um, theta, sorry, this incline is, yeah, I'm gonna call, I'm gonna call it theta because alpha is already used. And if this incline is theta, then and this is so we're trying to look for the maximum slope slope angle alpha and when we're trying to look at that we're trying to we always look at the extremes for everything and the extreme for this is if tan theta is equal to mu because if tan theta is equal to mu then um if tan theta is equal to mu then this is just going to be on the verge of slipping so if tan theta is equal to mu the frictional force here is going to be sorry not m um, little m g sine theta is equal to mu mg cosine theta which is equal to mg sine theta and that's what is equal to mg sine theta and that's why on um, the verge of slipping mu is going to be tan theta and since mu is equal to tan theta we can find the force, the frictional force, since it's mg sine theta. And, well, we can do that later. And let's let that friction force just be f. 
f equals mg sine theta, and now let's bounce torques about this um, circle here. We have um, the only two forces that are non that are non central here. So um, that mean I mean like don't go through the center is the frictional force here and the frictional force here. So the frictional force here is this. So F R is equal to the frictional force here. Let's call that F sub F times R, and these cancel. And F sub F, we can um, balance forces on this entire on this entire thing here, and just look at it as one block, right? Then the frictional force has to be m plus mg sine theta because that's just a simple inclined plane. So F is equal to m plus little m g sine theta times um, g sine theta sine alpha. And from here, we can now plug in mu for tan theta, arc tan mu for theta, and we can set and set these equal. So sine theta is just the same thing as before. It's going to be mu over square root 1 plus mu squared. And let's cancel the g's too. So then m times mu over root 1 plus mu squared is equal to m plus m sine alpha. And this just gives us alpha is equal to arc sine of m over m plus little m times mu over root 1 plus mu squared. And that's that problem. And let's move on to the next one. Problem number three. Three identical rods are connected by hinges to each other. The outmost ones are hinged to a ceiling at points A and B. The distance between these points is twice the length of a rod. The weight of mass M is hanged onto hinge C. At least how strong of a force onto hinge D is necessary to keep the system stationary with rod CD horizontal. So originally when I actually solved this problem, I assumed the rods is massless and that made the problem quite simple, but I don't think it was meant to be massless now. And there's a nice solution that um, doesn't really involve the masses. So let's, let's draw it a little bit bigger. And so if you do a little bit of geometry, I'm not going to really explain it. This is 2L, L, and L and L. It's pretty simple geometry, and you can see these are 60, 30, 60, 90 triangles. And from here, we extend these. And we're going to balance torques on, on CD about this point here. Let's call it like O. And if we balance, um, balance torques about here, the only torques that are here are going to be this mg force from the little mass there and the force f that we're applying and with so let's first find this so the torque due to this one is mg l over 2 and if we want to max if we want to minimize f then we're going to apply it perpendicular and that means the moment arm is going to be l by 30 60 90 triangles or just by you can see this is doubling by similar triangles and is equal to fl so this directly gives us f equals mg over 2 and that's pretty that's really nice right it's like two steps and you don't even have to worry about the masses of the mass of this because it's going to be in the center it's going to pass through o and the torque is going to be zero let's move on to problem number four so problem number four is going to use this one trick um, that we kind of used in problem number one but didn't really use and it's that at, um, just before slippage the frictional force and the normal force are going to point like this for example if this was on like an inclined plane like this and the sorry 
but the frictional force and normal force are going to the incline plane example doesn't make sense because of the angles I was drawing it at but if you sum these this is going to be mu n and n because at maximum slippage this is going to be mu n or well, I mean not maximum slippage just before slippage so now let's uh, read the problem what is the minimum force needed to dislodge a block of mass m resting on an inclined plane of slope angle alpha if the coefficient of friction is mu? Investigate the cases where a alpha equals 0 and b 0 is less than alpha is less than arc tan mu. So once we do 0, I think the second case actually becomes really the same thing. But let's do 0. So there's the block here. And let's investigate the forces on it. So we have... Uh, slanted force of gravity. So we have the force of gravity here, here with magnitude mg. And then we have the normal force, which I'm not going to draw here. Um, so I'm just going to draw them here. We have the normal force, and then we have the frictional force, which just before it's, um, just, just before it's dislodged, is going to be mu n. And we're going to combine these forces as one force, and we're going to draw it here. And by trigonometry, this angle here is arc tan mu. And this um, is parallel to mg, so this angle right here is arc tan mu. And from here, and notice how this force can point in any direction. It can point like this, this whatever. But um, if it's just before slippage, the net force has to be zero on this block. And so we never specify the direction here because the normal force depends on the force F that you apply. And it could like this, the sum of these two forces could be like pointing all the way over here or like all the way down here. And to minimize the force, we have to minimize the distance from the endpoint of this to here, which would make the vector sum zero. And that's just going to be at 90 degrees, right? And that means that this right here is F equals mg sine arctamu. And we already found sine of arctamu like three times already. And that's mg times mu over root 1 plus mu squared. And lastly, for Lastly, for part B, zero, less, 0 is less than alpha is less than arc tan mu. It's going to be the exact same thing. I'm just going to draw it here, except the vector sum is going to point like this at arc tan mu. I know that's really small, you probably can't see it, but with the vertical here, because that's what the normal force is. And from here, if we draw gravitational force and we add these forces, it's going to be like this. And we know this angle alpha is, so this angle is alpha between the normal and gravitational force. So then the angle between the arctan mu and uh, alpha and the gravitational force is going to be arctan mu minus alpha. So for here it's just the same problem and instead it's mg sine of, sorry that cut off. It's just going to be mg sine of arctan mu minus alpha. And that's going to be it for this video and thanks for watching.